Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Brown Baptist Church. This is Men's Weekend 2022 right here on the campuses of Brown Baptist, and we are so excited to have each of you to join us on this day. Well, my name is Kenny Lackey, and I will be your host for this countdown, and uh, I'm filling the shoes of Pastor Orr, and I'm glad to be here. And Pastor, I hope I can do a good job to honor you and your absence. All right, I'd like to introduce to you our guests. This time we have Brother Embrick Johnson. Embrick? Hello. Welcome, everyone. We're glad to have you. Um, Embrick Johnson. I'm the new coordinator for the men's ministry here at Brown Baptist Church. Just delighted to be a part of this celebration. The next young man I'd like to introduce to you is one that I've been knowing for a mighty, mighty, mighty long time. As a matter of fact, uh, his uncles and his uh, uh, cousins used to have a group called the Sons of Wonder. And they were from a little city called Friars Point, Mississippi. And I actually knew him when he, you know, he's flying all over the country now. But I actually knew him when he had a guitar and he would take that guitar and twirl it around like it was an airplane. And now he's flying all over the country and he's giving God the praise. And I'm like to introduce to you the one and only Mr. Josh Miles. Hey, Josh, how you doing? How about it, Mr. Lanky? I'm doing all right. Glad all right. to be here, man. I thank you for inviting me. We're glad to have you here. Glad to have you. And of course, we have our Men's Day uh, Summit, who will be singing to the power of the Lord come down on this weekend, the one and only Mr. Paul Porter. Now, let me tell you how I met Paul. Uh, many, many years ago, before I came to Brown Baptist, uh, I used to travel around on the Bobby Jones gospel shows, and I had the privilege of opening for Yolanda Adams and Kirk Franklin and all of the gospel greats. I mean, I, I can even re remember uh, on those shows, there was Shirley Caesar and, and the book. Not about me, but I got a chance to meet Paul on one of those shows. And then from there, I saw him in, it was D.C. I saw him in uh, North Carolina on the Shirley Caesar show. And it was just all around. And I'm like, man, this guy here is truly doing it. He got them two wings and he's flying all over the world. And uh, I guess I came in because Paul and was flying and I was driving. So I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Paul Porter. Paul? How are you doing, Brother Lackey? I'm just so glad to be here, and I'm always honored to be at Brown Baptist and be involved in anything that Brown Baptist is doing. So I'm just excited to be here, brother. And we are very, very, very excited to have uh, Mr. Porter as well as Mr. Uh, Miles here uh, on this weekend. At this time, I would like to go into a part of the interview that's very, very um, special to us. For as you know, we are still mourning the loss of uh, the late, great Keith Wonderboy Johnson. And, um, you know, last year at Brown, uh, Josh Miles was our uh, Men's Day uh, summons. And he came before us and he was saying, my life, my life. And uh, it was awesome. And the mighty men of Brown was able to uh, get behind him. And we did a tribute to uh, Lee Williams because we're just... Uh, Lee Williams had just transitioned. And uh, now, uh, this year, unfortunately, uh, Keith Wonderboy Johnson has uh, has gone on to be uh, with the Lord. And uh, Josh, we wanted to just talk to you about some of the um, wonderful things that you and Keith got a chance to do uh, in, the, uh, in the music world. Well, <clears throat> we did a lot in a, a short time. Uh, uh, Keith's album, Keep Pushing, he gave me a call and uh, that his daughter's like uh, my life, so we actually recorded that song together on that project. And that went on to win uh, the Stella, a Stella Award in 2019. And that's what we was, we, we was, uh, we was happy about that, man, because, you know, like I said, I've been knowing you a long time, and to see you grow up from, uh, you know, running the cotton fields of Fries Point, Mississippi, <laughs> <laughs> to being up there on the Stella Awards and, and, uh, and winning it, man, that's, that's, Truly amazing. So, uh, and then you know, with Keith and all of the uh, the great recordings that he left us and all of this, and you and uh, Keith had an opportunity to do a song called "Older oh, Joy." Yes, Can sir. you tell us about that one? "Older oh, Joy." Uh, last time we uh, recorded together in Tupelo, uh, he came down. Uh, Paul was there. Uh, Mr. Harvey, and George Dean. Uh, we just kind of had a, a great time together. Uh, with everybody, you know, just spreading love and joy. And, you know, we ate chicken and, <laughs> yeah, you know, <clears throat> and, went, and we re recorded my first uh, solo record. And, um, and that was? 
Uh, it's called Never Let Me Down, live in Tupelo, Mississippi. Is this it right here? I think this is it right That's here. It. Yes, sir. Okay, you can tell us where we can uh, pick that pick this up. You can pick that up wherever you consume your music, uh, uh, whether it be Spotify, Apple Music, or uh, what's the title? Yeah. <laughs> All of those places. Uh, we got the physical copies. You can contact me at uh, uh, mileshousemusic at gmail.com, and uh, we can get one to get a physical copy to you if you want one. Gotcha, gotcha. You know, Josh was our um, uh, special guest last year. Well, this year... Our special guest is the one and only Mr. Paul Porter. Yay! <laughs> and Paul, just before you tell us about uh, your your uh, uh, times with uh, Keith, uh, next year, Brother Embrick, we were planning to bring in Keith Wonderboy Johnson. Wow. And just to show you how uh, Brown Baptist really ties into the gospel music world and ties into quartet and traditional music, uh, we are we are definitely on the forefront of uh, putting putting out the music and supporting the music that will make us make us special. And so, Paul, uh, tell us about your uh, experiences with Keith. Oh man, we've had so many. First, uh, Keith came in this business as a baby, and, sh- and so did I. I think I signed my first record deal at 19, and I'm 16. Old, so, so you we didn't know that. We didn't yeah. know that. We I signed my first. No, no, no. I'm 60 years old now. <laughs> so I've been doing this 41 years traveling nationally on the road. And Keith came in as a baby, probably 16, 17, 18. And so, you know, when Keith came out here, I was already running. But we ran into each other many times. We worked together so much. We worked in the studio together on many occasions. But just recently, right before he passed, yeah. we were already into a six-week tour of the Dynamic Duo. The Dynamic Duo. We had come yeah. up with that name, you know, of course, from Batman and Robin. But uh, at the end of the day, we were calling it the Dynamic Duo Tour. And we said, what better way with the two youngest baby legends of quartet? You know, uh, he was 50, I was 60. And we said, we can work together. And, do, you know, we were, we were kind of like the masters of doing tracks. Anyway. Right, right. So we said, let's come together and do a tour. And we started uh, putting it together. And we were going to add to Kaylin Carr, uh, Cardi Cortez, and many others. You know, like friends, maybe a quartet here or something like that. And we already had the investors ready to do 15 cities. Wow. You know, before we could get that done, he passed. Well, you know, truly one of the amazing things is that when I first heard Keith, when I first heard you, and when I first first heard Josh's family, the Miles family, uh, it was down in Clarkston, Mississippi. Whoa. There was a uh, disc jockey by the name of Early Wright. He used to play all of y'all. Man, he played them two wings, and he played at uh, High Behind the Mountain, yeah. and so forth. And um, it was just an amazing time to, to grow up uh, and to see where Keith came from at, at, at such a young age. He was like, you and him both are like the, the, the youngest, oldest, the, the youngest, <laughs> oldest quartet singers out there. Well, well you know, the thing I <laughs> Yo, say youngest about, and the oldest. The thing I say about Keith, Keith was never afraid. Now, I came out timid, but Keith came out like he had been doing this. He was only about 19 or 18. He came out like he had been doing it 90 years. I mean, he was just a go-getter, a gunner, and he just come out with a natural ability, a gift from God, to just go out there and just have at it. And uh, the proof in the pudding is when High Behind the Mountain came out, Keith told me that he told the record company that he signed with, he said, y'all need artists, y'all ain't got no artists yet. But he didn't have a record deal. Right. So he said, well, until you can get Keith Wonderboy, you ain't got no artist. No and artist. when he signed, he proved it because High Behind the Mountain was their first hit. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it's still a hit. It's and uh, hit. we will be doing the Mighty Men of Brown. We'll be singing a little bit of High Behind the Mountain. Yes. 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 And honor and tribute uh, to Keith. So, uh, Josh, you and Paul have been doing some work together, too. Tell us about that. Yes, sir. Uh, well, Paul is actually on that. He's on this album also. We got a song called <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy oh, Ghost. Yeah. And I just got to say, I mean, I, I just feel, uh, I can't even describe the feeling that I feel from these guys, Paul, King, Mr. Harvey, even George Dean. Those guys just, I don't know, they just love me and they have, they took me under their wing and taught me. Uh, the business and uh, taught me and are teaching me how to maneuver in this business and, and do things the right way. So right. I really just got to say I appreciate them for that. And, and, uh, 
Paul ain't steer me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're wondering what must, who's who's Mr. Harvey, he's talking about Mr. Harvey uh, Watkins of the Canton Spiritual. The legendary, yeah, yeah, the Canton Spiritual. And uh, we, we, he, Emrick, he's no stranger to us. We, we sing a lot of his music, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, all righty. Well, let me just say that uh, as we uh, celebrate Men's Day 2022 here at Brown, uh, we're inviting again all of you to come out and be a part because it's going to be truly exciting. Uh, Paul is going to, uh, man, there's a song you got called Stand Up. Man, where, where y'all come over there at? I thought I, I, I thought I was teaching a song. <laughs> the Temptation. Just stand Up. Well, you know what? Oh, uh, I, when yeah. I first signed with uh, Motown Records, they wanted me to do something like that. And I said, I already have a song like that, which was, you know, Stand Up. And Stand Up came from, uh, we were in Ohio, and uh, this guy, I, 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 I trying to think of his name but I can't find him at this time he said man y'all need a temptation feel and so we came up with you know is there anybody here yeah, with the background it. stand up yeah, which is that temptation it, thing you yeah. know <laughs> so we, we just uh, we took a liking to it and a lot of people did too and we're just proud that you know it became what it was yeah, yeah. Okay, well, before we run out of time, can y'all just tell us a little bit about how are we going to keep Keith Wonderboy Johnson's legacy? Oh, that's that. easy. Tell them, tell them, Johnson. I mean, we, we, we've got a lot of content. Then as well, you know, we've worked with them so much until, you know, whatever we have to do in educating these younger generation you know if we we may even come out with a record with a tribute of different millennial artists singing keeps because he impacted he, the he, young and the old he touched the world yeah he touched the world we're definitely going to do that mm -hmm. <clears throat> and also we're going to keep the spirit alive mm -hmm. uh, me and paul had a conversation a while back uh what one thing that keith did was reach back and help those others. that were coming behind him. yeah he did a lot of that Whereas to a lot of groups, you know, you can, I mean, it's not it's not a crime to, you know, get busy in your craft to, to you get so busy, you can, you, that's all you're doing. But it was just, Keith made an extra effort to reach back. When he uh, told Josh he liked that song, Keith didn't have to choose him, but because of the favor on Josh's life and God directing him to Keith, uh, Keith to Josh, uh, this song became a stellar award winning song. And so that's just not by accident. That's just spirit led when, you know, Keith felt it. Hey, man, I like this is what Josh doing. And uh, Josh is, you know, taking it to the world. And that song was Believe in Yourself 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right. And as we get ready to wrap up, please do not forget to text my Brown Baptist to 27636. So again, so you can know what's happening here at Brown. You can keep up with us and all of our special guests. And who knows? You may even find a link of these guys' music there, Paul. That's right. Hey, I'm going to be there Sunday. I'm just going to enjoy myself, but as well, you know, maybe some surprises. You just never know. Some Somebody surprises. else might show up. All right. Up. Well, we'll be looking forward to those surprises, <laughs> right, Brother Henry? That's right. We can't wait. <laughs> All right, well, listen, we're getting ready to go into worship. And again, text somebody, call somebody, let them know right now that we're on and we're live. Men's Day 2022, Round Baptist. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we all have the reason to rejoice and be glad in it. It's Men's Weekend at Brown, and we're celebrating all the godly men in our lives as we continue to power our future for generations to come. We're so happy that you made the decision to worship with us today. Our prayer is that everything you experience will inspire you to live out your faith no matter the situation. To our guests, we would love to connect with you, so please text BMBC Guest to 27636 to let us know a little more about you and to receive a gift of appreciation. And make sure you like, love, tag, and comment on the live stream and invite others to worship with you. Do your part to let the world know about the one who can change everything. Here are your announcements for the week. As we continue our fourth quarter, we invite you to be a part of something greater. Leave a legacy for your family and help us secure the future of our church by purchasing a brick in our main campus prayer garden. Single lines are $300 and double lines are $500. To get more information, text BRICK to 27636. 
This weekend, Saturday, October 29th, is our drive through Blessing in Disguise event for children featuring kids' crafts, candy, balloon art, characters, and more, all from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on our main campus grounds. And donations of individually wrapped bags of candy are being accepted at both welcome centers for this event. For more details, email nextgen at brownbaptist.org. BNBC has committed to covering Memphis and the Mid-South in prayer on the 25th of each month. Our next commitment is October 25th. We are soliciting prayer volunteers to select a 30-minute slot to pray for Memphis and the Mid-South. Just text PRAYER to 27636 to sign up. If you have any questions, please contact Jeff Jackson at pastorjackson at brownbaptist.org or 901-277-5231. Are you looking to tune up your computer skills? Well, Axe Career Center just released their fall computer class schedule. Classes include Intro to Computers, Basic Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft Word. To register or get more information, go to AxeCareerCenter.org or call 662-796-2287. Additionally, the Axe Career Center will host a career readiness class on Tuesday, October 25th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The focus will be on interviewing skills and creating a resume. Only five spots are available, so register now by emailing axregistration at brownbaptist.org. Sponsorship opportunities are now available for our 2022 Soulful Christmas. If you, your family, or your business would like to be a sponsor, please see one of the sponsorship team members in the Welcome Center. Text sponsorship to 27636 or contact Tracy Harmon at tharmon at brownbaptist.org. As we continue our journey through the Bible this year, join us weekly for the Young Adult Corner, Mondays online at 7 p.m., live prayer Wednesdays online at 6 a.m., noon Bible study in person in the main campus sanctuary or online, evening Bible study and connect groups in person at the South Campus and online at 6.30 p.m., as well as in-person prayer meetings Saturdays at 8 a.m. in the South Campus. Those are your announcements for this week. To get all the updates, information, and details, text BMBC to 27636. Visit our website, brownbaptist.org, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Well, family, that's our time. But remember, this is the year of our calling, where we're confident that together, we will win in our purpose as we continue changing lives and making a difference. Have a blessed and amazing week. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, Brown. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad they're in it. This is our men's weekend. And our theme is Powering Our Future. We extend a special welcome to everyone, including our online worshipers, especially our first-time guests. Now, if you are a first-time guest, please text BMBC Guest to 27636 for a gift of appreciation. We ask that you would take the time to share, comment, and like this live stream via Facebook and other social media outlets. And remember, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just a couple of announcements to come before you before we dive into our service. Congratulations to BMBC for winning the Spirit of Main Street Award. BMBC was recognized as a business that has maintained a constant consumer following and is thriving and growing in the West End State Line District of the city of South Haven, Mississippi. Also, congratulations to Lisa Dandridge, current WREG producer and manager who received the Tennessee Association Broadcasters Award for her Manhunt Monday series. Congratulations to Will and Katina Mathena for 20 years of marriage this weekend. God bless you. God bless you. So go ahead and click that share button and let's continue to share the love of Jesus Christ by tagging your family and your friends. We would like to receive 1,000 shares per service. Brown, are you ready to satisfy? Are you ready to congratulate and glorify these men? Are you ready to celebrate these men? Well, stand on your feet 
as the mighty men of Brown takes us to higher heights in our worship. God bless you. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Woo! Y'all looking mighty great this morning. Let me ask you a question. Listen, is there anybody here that loves the Lord like I do? Why don't you stand up? Good God. Anybody in really love the Lord like I do? Why don't you stand up? Come on, mighty men, say, I, I stand for in righteousness. Oh, I, I stand because I truly have been blessed. I said, I love him because they first love me. Oh, I, I love him because he gave me the victory. Anybody in I really love the Lord <laughs> like I do? Why don't you? Again, let's say that again. I said, I, I stand for your righteousness. Oh, I, I, I stand because I truly been there. I said, I, I love him because the first loved me. Oh, I, I love him because the gave me the victory. Anybody here really, really love the Lord like I do? Why don't you? Let me see you wave your hand Anybody here I really love the Lord Like I do Why don't you Oh, is there any Anybody here Really, really love me Yeah Say if there's anybody I know you're not ashamed Praise the Lord, everyone. Yeah. Praise the Lord again. The Lord. Hallelujah. Our scripture reading is coming from Psalms 133rd Division. And we're going to read the first, second, and third verses. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. God's word is blessed. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to tell you thank you. Thank you, dear God, for waking us up this morning, clothing our right mind with the activities of our limbs, oh God. We found our families doing well. We walked to our refrigerator and had a little bacon and eggs. Hallelujah, God, and we want to tell you thank you. Yeah, we went outside and we crunk up our car. It wasn't crunking or clanking, God, but it crunk on up. And you brought us to the house of prayer one more time. And we just believe right now, God, that we just come to tell you thank you because you've been so good to us. You've been better to us 
that we can beat up ourselves. And we tell you, thank you. Hallelujah. Come on in the building, God. Move like never before. Let the anointing have its way right now. Look on Pastor Orr. God, touch his body. Touch his mind. Give him a bubble shine. Touch him in the old shanda. In Jesus' name. Do a new thing for Brown. Hallelujah. Be in the midst of the service all day long. And we are forever. Give your name the praise. We are forever. Give your name the glory. And we are forever. Give your name the praise. In Jesus' name. Put your hand together and tell God, thank you. There's a storm out on the ocean And it's moving this way If your soul not hanging in tears You will surely drift away There's a storm out on the ocean Yes, and it's moving this way And if your soul know the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous can run into it and find safety it's good to know that he is watching over us and so for all of those that are have requested prayer for those that are going through uh, 
you can continue to text those messages and those prayer requests to 901 616-1258 but we do, are praying for uh, Beverly Thomas amen your mom my favorite member she's having surgery um, this upcoming on tomorrow amen I want to be just praying for just healing for her I'm asking uh, for healing for Lakeisha and healing and strength in the name of Jesus um, Courtney Moore amen we're praying for you and even as you battle uh, this, uh, we know that our God is able. And, uh, and we're just praying that God will give you a full and speedy recovery. And we're also praying for your father, uh, Kara Coleman, as he starts his chemo uh, treatment. And we're praying for just healing uh, and just strength for the continued support. For Pam, who had a stroke and is in the hospital, we're lifting Pam up to the Lord even now. Sister Marietta Moore and family in Vicksburg, we're praying for you even now. And as those prayer requests come, continue to come in, we want to continue to be praying uh, for all of our bereaved families, uh, those that have been going through, um, even starting this past Friday, um, we have been having continuous funerals, and so we want to be praying uh, for the family of Jeffrey Marshall, who was funeralized on Friday. Uh, our member, uh, Edna Abram, was funeralized yesterday morning here. We want to be praying uh, for her family. Edna is my first cousin. And want to be praying for her family and and my abrams they are faithful eight o'clockers and so uh, we also want to be praying for the family of dr william young he was finalized at our south campus bishop young tremendous blessing to the body of christ and then um, last week another one of our members 50 years old maurice butler um, passed away just had a birthday and uh, we want to be praying for his wife Kalia and uh, just an entire family that funeral is upcoming this week and then yesterday uh, sweet mother mother Henrietta Moore passed away and want to be praying for her daughters uh, all who are faithful members here at this ministry as well I want to continue to be praying for the family of Bessie Marie Farms who was finalized on Saturday for Velva Sloan, whose mother uh, passed away, and that funeral is upcoming. We want to keep that family in our prayers. And um, it's just been one of these um, last couple of weeks of just uh, pastors passing. Uh, we want to be praying for uh, the Myers family. Pastor Jimmy Myers Sr. Uh, passed away, longtime pastor in this North Mississippi area. Uh, matter of fact, Bates is married to his granddaughter. And so we want to be praying for the Myers family, for his son, Pastor Jimmy Myers. Um, Phyllis, we're continuing to pray for Bria and just for her healing as well. Traveling mercy for you, Tracy, as well. And, um, and so we know that our God um, is able um, to do all things. And um, as we celebrate this men's weekend, is uh, today I'm going to ask Deacon Earl Harmon. He's going to come uh, with our just special appeal for today, and and then after um, Earl, I want to also uh, have a video. Amen. We got some great news that are coming our way, and I want you to hear about that. And then we're going to come back and go further. Amen. All right. Good morning, Brown. Deacon Harmon takes a Deacon Smith moment. I remember when I came back to my first men's day when I was supposed to be grown. I had been in school about four years. And I came home in 1995, and my father asked me to MC a men's day. I came in and had an opportunity to introduce my grandfather. 
introduce my grandfather and you got to know Brother Smith. When I introduced him, he came down and he said, I've been here many years. I've been here a many, many years. Oh, I've been here so many years. And at that moment, everybody had a slight chuckle because they understood. But as he went on, he said, my grandson, he, he called my name. When he was young, he, he used to follow me. I, I, I raised him up. Another chuckle came from the audience. And then he began to quote a scripture. Not read it, but quote it from his heart. And at the end of the scripture, he told the people that read the word daily. Put it close to your heart. When you put it close to your heart, it might be a day when you can't hear like you used to. Your eyes might get a little bad. But you got to know it for yourself. Ah, oh, he been good. He been so good to us. He been good to us through the generations. And at that moment, they took a man's assessment. Hundred dollars. 1995, I didn't have my hundred dollars. But he sure been good to me. He was good to them during their generation, but he's been good to me. And pastor, I don't know if we took it out of line, but what I was going to do, we were supposed to bring some baskets up. The video... And I'm going to do something that I couldn't do in 95. I'm going to start it up. I'm going to put my $100 in this book. And, and I know that he been good to you men because I see you. He woke you up and allowed you to come here this morning. So if he been good to you, you got to show that he been good to you. And if, he, if you don't think he been good to you yet, write your name on the envelope. And just put your envelope in here. And I call you myself. And I pray with you and I pray for you. Because what we want to do, we want to be strong men. And serve our age. I got three more honey for a brick for Brother Smith too. Thank you. Bless us indeed. And, and here goes Brother Smith honey. Bless us indeed and enlarge our territories. Despite the pandemic woes and economic downturns, God has continued to bless Brown and now has presented us with another opportunity to enlarge our territories. Nestled at the corner of Winchester and Riverdale, the Stephen Ofer Center is already equipped with a chapel, a home, a six bedroom lodge, a hotel, and beautiful land that we believe could offer a great need to our community. It has a rich legacy of training pastors. As a young pastor, I sat under the teaching of Dr. Stephen Oford at this center. And as a seasoned pastor, I received my Doctor of Ministry degree at this same site. And now Brown has a contract to purchase this property. Why purchase this? Why now? Well, first of all, continuing the expository preaching training of pastors. Two of our five M's that drive all that we do here at Brown is message and mentoring. What churches need now more than ever are pastors committed to rightly dividing the word and accurately proclaiming the word. From Memphis to San Antonio to Mozambique, Africa, Dr. David Oford and I have been partnering for years to train pastors. What a wonderful opportunity to continue and expand this aspect of expository preaching. 
But then secondly, discipleship training. The next M is for maturity, growing disciples. This site will serve as an excellent retreat for churches to bring their adults and youth, the teachers and students for spiritual renewal. And then thirdly, to be used as an event venue. Already featured as an ideal wedding and family reunion, this facility will be a first-class space for the many functions that members and friends of Brown already need. And finally, community engagement. Another one of our M's, Brown, is ministry. And Brown is known for giving back. Purchasing this property gives us the opportunity to address the challenges facing our community. This property provides a safe place for those in need, a space for retreats and church services, and job opportunities for people with various gifts and talents. As we celebrate 140 years of being a beacon of light in the community in November, the goal is to celebrate the completed purchase. However, we need your help to close the deal and finish strong for the year. Brown is always on the given end, but this time we are asking you to help us as we're on the asking end. You see, I would love to see every member and friend of BMBC give $140 before October 30th so that we can accomplish this goal together, not only as a church, but as a community. As always, we have three buckets set up as given opportunities, tithes and offerings to keep the lights on, missions to keep the light going, vision to keep the light growing. Your gift of any amount to any bucket would be greatly appreciated. Here are the ways that you can give. You can give via the Brown Baptist mobile app. You can text GIVE to 27636. You can give online at brownbaptist.org or you can set up recurring giving. As always, you can call your gift in to 662-342-6407. And of course, we accept cash out at dollar sign Brown Baptist. Thank you for partnering with Brown Baptist as God enlarged our territory. And together, as we see Brown continue to serve our community and to be a blessing to those in need. Amen. God bless you. And I am excited and looking forward to your partnership. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so very much, Earl. I didn't know Earl was going to go back and do one of those Jesse James moments um, because I was going to do a Jesse James moment. Um, but I appreciate you, Brown. Look, several years ago, 03, matter of fact, uh, we were getting ready to pay off the last note on the other building. We were getting ready to start even a building project on this building as well as the gymnasium. And Jesse James Smith was uh, our, one of the first ones who gave. And he gave because he said, Pastor, I may not ever play ball over there in that building, but I want to give even for future generations. Um, in a moment, I know the men have already started this. In a moment, I'm going to ask us to do one of these old-fashioned giving. I appreciate the men coming first. Uh, men ought to lead the way. But ladies, I'm going to give you an opportunity as well because as you've just heard, we have a great opportunity before us. And we have an opportunity to purchase the Stephen Olford Center. When I started this year out, uh, that was nowhere on our horizon. Uh, but in the last literally uh, 45, 60 days, that opportunity have come. And we want to close on it next Monday. Uh, but to do that, uh, we're asking each one of you to, to go above and beyond, even today, and to give. First Chronicles chapter 29 talked about David and bringing the gifts for the temple that he wouldn't even have to build, but he was preparing it for the next generation. And the Bible says that David gave all that he could. And then the family leaders, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 6, the family leaders, the leaders of the tribes, the generals, and the captains of the army, the king's administrators, officers, they all gave willingly. I'm so grateful that we've already had the buy-in and commitment of leaders of this ministry that have already said, Pastor, we believe in the vision that God has given you, and we're going above and beyond, even above the $140, uh, to make this a reality. And then the Bible says that verse 9, the 
people rejoiced over the offerings for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord and King David was filled with joy. Oh, brothers and sisters, uh, there are unique opportunities that we have uh, to really go beyond what the Lord have called us to do. And this is one of those moments, an opportunity uh, for us to continue to impact our community in a way that would bring great glory uh, to God. That's my prayer, that God would enlarge our territory, not just for our generation, but for the generations uh, to come. And you know what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 36, when Moses was bringing that gift for the tabernacle, the people gave so much more until they had more than enough to do all that they needed to do. So as we give today, yes, we're still giving to our tithes and our offering. And I appreciate those who continue to give faithfully because tithes and offerings keep the lights on. Uh, but we're asking you this day to go above and beyond. We're asking brothers, uh, yes, give that $100. Yes, give that $140. That's $240. Yes, that's my math. That's $240. Uh, stack the gift. Are you still asking folks to get a brick? Yes, we're still asking folks to get a brick. Um, why? Because we want God to give us more than enough to do all that he has called them us to do and so as we give here at Brown and as we celebrate what God is doing the Bible says in the book of Exodus that none of us should appear before God empty-handed uh, but everyone should appear um, bringing something unto the Lord we say at every worship every one ought to be given something if you need an offering envelope um, you can raise your hand you can give uh, through offering envelope in a moment I'm gonna actually ask you uh, as they sing uh, for us, all of us, to just bring our gift. Matter of fact, y'all give me some more basket on this side um, as well as we honor the Lord with the first fruits of all of our increase. As we give above and beyond. Some might be thinking or saying, well, Pastor, I can give even more than 140. Uh, I can be a blessing this day. Uh, some of y'all are saying, Pastor, uh, you know, good and well, I didn't bring no check today and I don't even have any cash. Amen. Raise your phone in the air. Amen. Because you can give uh, even through your digitally there are many ways that you can give here at brown um, you can always uh, call your gift in you can uh, give using our my brown baptist app um, you can give online for those that are watching online look um, type in the comment line that i'm all in and that you can give as well um, you can give even via cash app amen uh, dollar sign brown baptist dollar sign brown baptist uh, just put your name in that memo and just say vision uh, as we give unto the lord here's what i'm believing god to do i'm believing god uh, for this weekend to be our greatest offering in the history of this church um, as we give unto uh, the lord and so we're going to pray and um and then we're going to give them in an old-fashioned way as y'all just bring your gift i know it's a pandemic pastor i know it's been a couple of years pastor i know but i want y'all to get up and walk and bring your gift unto the lord and if you don't have it in paper or in cash if you just sit there just like i said just hold up thank y'all for just holding up your phones to say i'm giving that way but let's pray father god Thank you right now for the gifts. Thank you for the givers. Thank you for this critical opportunity that have landed in our lap. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we have committed our plans unto you, as you have shown favor, that you will bring it to fruition. God, we ask it even now. Lord, we thank you for those that um, perhaps are going even above and beyond and making the sacrifice thank you for those who are stepping out on faith those who have given even in memory of others who have already gone on we thank you for what this ministry means to the community and to the world and lord i pray that you will continue to give us more than enough to do all that you have called us to do in jesus name we pray amen well, Luke chapter 6, Luke chapter 6, 38. Come on, let's read that together. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. 
the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Eight o'clock, you know you're my favorite folks. Amen. So will you bring your gift even now? Will you bring your gift even now? Y'all say amen as he come and lead our men at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many know he's worthy to be praised? Listen, we thought we would do a song this morning. Of course, you know, those that know anything about gospel music. We lost Keith Wonderboy Johnson last week. We let him to rest thought maybe to give a tribute this morning. Is that all right if we sing one song? Amen. Amen. Thank you. you can just put your hands together and go back to the old time way when we didn't have carpet on the floor. Put that wooden floor stump on your foot. Keith would get up to the mic and he kind of sound like his nose. I feel like praising the Lord. <laughs> And he would sing a song that said the word, I'm gonna hide behind the mind. Everybody just get a whole down home country clap. Woo! Ooh, that guitar sound pretty good too.
here know what I'm talking about. When the wicked shall cease from traveling. You really feel chilly wind. Chilly wind. I'm going where the chilly. Oh, yeah. Chilly I'm going where the chilly. Is that all right? Is that all right? Well, let me take you back a little further. If y'all don't mind now, I'm going to get comfortable and sing one of my songs. But this is old school. If you ain't old school, then educate your neighbor. Because we're getting ready to sing something to fly away to be at rest. Y'all going to help me praise him? Why 
you pray in that thing this morning. Now everybody help me. Help me say higher.
I'm sorry, we got to move on, but when I think of the goodness and all that for me, I can and how he set me free, I can Seconds of a dance, come on. One, two, three, pop. worthy to be prayed y'all see that lady right there that's what you call grateful that lady is in the spirit and can't nobody snap her out of it because he's been so good hallelujah thank you Lord I don't even know if we need to sing this song Somebody said, come on, but woo, I could stay here just thinking about when I had passed it, when I had the aneurysm on the brain, a vein burst in my brain. So I'm going to tell y'all this and y'all may be shocked. I really don't ever have a bad day. You know why? Because when I start thinking about what God done for me, boy, 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 kept me alive. Ain't nothing better than being on this side of the ground. And I'm thanking for it. He's my redeemer. He's my redeemer. Come on. We're going to do this briefly. Oh, hallelujah. Whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen. She said that I know. I know. Y'all sound good. My redeemer. My redeemer. She said that I know. Pastor Faze, huh? I was in the wheelchair, but God raised me up and said, I can feel inside every day.
This is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. He that has been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Will you help me praise God one more time just for another day? Our God has been faithful. Our God has been kind and gracious. And we are grateful and able to testify once again of the goodness of an almighty God. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we don't know where we would be. We greet you with Jesus joy this morning to rise and to declare that there is a word from the Lord. Would you do me a favor and help me praise God for the pastor of this people and the angel of this assembly, Dr. Bartholomew Orr. Come on, praise God for your pastor, fearless leader, amen, visionary, amen, structural architect, you name it. So many gifts, such a, such a blessing such a blessing to brown and even beyond i don't live in memphis i'm in nashville uh, but the reverberations of his ministry and impact reach us as well and we're grateful dr Orr, uh, for your leadership and grateful that you keep saying yes to god amen 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 come on help me praise god for the men of brown the men of brown my goodness hallelujah Praise God for the men of Brown who are leading us and we're celebrating you and your presence today. We are grateful for your leadership, excited about how and the ways in which God is speaking to you, leading you and guiding you. Not just the men in the choir, but there are men scattered and peppered throughout the congregation. If you got a brother on your road, tell him, I see you, dog. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Brothers don't get the love they need. Sometimes you got to hear it. Come on, look at them and tell them, I see you, player, for real. Like, for real, for real. I, I see you. Now I'm saying, you showed up at 8 a.m. I see you, dog. I see you. Amen. We certainly appreciate and affirm and affirm our brothers. We affirm our men. And we're grateful, grateful that you are on the Lord's side. And that you are doing those things that are making an impact not only in this generation but generations to come would you do me a favor go with me in your bibles to the book of acts acts chapter 1 acts chapter 1 beginning at verse 21 reading from the new living translation acts chapter 1 beginning at verse 21 from the new living translation today as i see is the custom of the house to stand for the reading of the word let's stand if we're able to as we dive into god's word acts chapter 1 beginning at verse beginning at verse 21 here's what the word says so now we must choose a replacement for Judas from among the men who were with us the entire time we were traveling with the Lord Jesus from the time he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus's resurrection so they nominated two men Joseph called Barsabbas also known as Justice and matthias then they all prayed oh lord you know every heart show us which of these men you have chosen as an apostle to replace judas in this ministry for he has deserted us and gone where he belongs then they cast lots and matthias was selected to become an apostle with the other 11. this is the word of the lord might the people of god say amen amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord I want to talk today with the Holy Spirit's guidance and with your prayers from the subject, Don't Miss God. Don't miss God. Don't miss God. Nudge that neighbor beside you. Tell a neighbor, sometimes it's easy, but I want you to concentrate. Tell them, don't miss God. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we're grateful again for this day and excited about the opportunity that life yields to us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for keeping us clothed and in our right minds. Thank you that mercy didn't take a day off. It met us this morning. Thank you that grace decided to show up for work today and continues to keep us and cover us. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful in every season of life 
now lord as we gather here around your word here's our prayer that you will let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart allow it to be acceptable in your sight oh lord my strength and my redeemer god preach through me to me and for me send the word so your people are edified but in everything your name will be glorified i bless you for the treasure that you've placed in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of god and not of us Punish not your people now for the frailty of your preacher. Allow me to say it the way you want it said. Lord, my power is not enough. I need yours. My strength is insufficient. I need you. Have your way today. Do what only you can do and say what only you can say. And we'll be careful to give you glory, honor, praise, and credit. Both now and forever. And the blessed people of God said, Amen. Come on, if you trust God, give him glory one more time. see my friend and brother dr earl fisher god bless you man good to see you good to see you don't miss god friends freshman year of high school uh, is a traumatic time for most kids it's a traumatic time for me and uh, those who are heading into that new uh, environment and experience also experience some of that trauma kids that are heading into their freshman year are dealing with a multiplicity of human factors for one they just became teenagers god help us all they are leaving middle school where they were seniors head of the class now heading into an environment where the roles have been shifted they are now fresh men some would call them fresh meat they are rookies they are new the school is new teachers are new experiences are new expectations are new and i remember the trepidation that i experienced heading into my freshman year but the one thing i could always count on being the same for me was the sport that i loved and that sport friends was basketball now don't look at me with that tone of voice yes i played <laughs> basketball don't let the hype fool you. You get your, you mess around, and get embarrassed. I don't. I, I played. I played basketball. Played played basketball most of my most of my childhood, and I played for my middle school the previous year. Helped them to a great season. So I was looking forward to the court being the spot where I could find some normalcy in this hectic new routine. Furthermore, my older brother had been a star at the high school I was going to, so it was my turn y'all understand i was excited i was ready i was ready to go tryouts went well that year uh, for me as they had gone in previous years i shot the ball well i passed the ball very well played tough defense i was a team player now naturally i am not anatomically equipped to play center so i played point guard that's what i did i facilitated the flow of the game make sure you get people in position to score and keep the thing moving now being smaller than everybody else always forced me to play harder than everyone but that was nothing new to me i've been short all my life i was used to that been doing that since i picked the ball up so i was prepared never forget it tryouts always ended on thursday night the last tryout was thursday night and then friday morning they would take the list of the people who made the team and place it at the front door the entrance of the gymnasium the list of the people who made it was always placed there so that morning i jumped on the school bus skipped breakfast i never skipped breakfast i skipped breakfast and ran uh, ran quickly to the front entrance of the gymnasium i was surrounded by other folks who had tried out as well we were all there and when i got there y'all it didn't take me long to find out what i had been waiting to see only problem was it was not what i wanted to see y'all i did not make the team i messed up I, 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 I didn't understand. I had given my best. I was fully qualified. I was fully capable. And I wanted it badly. And that junior varsity head coach told me no. I was devastated. I was flabbergasted. I was bewildered. I was astonished. I did not understand, Dr. O, how this goes down. It didn't make sense to me. I thought that if you gave your best and you were fully prepared and you wanted it bad enough, 
that you would always receive a yes. It was the first time I remember learning that you can be qualified and still be denied. I, I still, I still recall, still recall that, 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 that day how getting a no uh, from that head JV basketball coach made me, made me feel. I, I remember the disappointment. I, I, I remember the hurt. I, I remember the embarrassment. Because if I didn't see my name on the list, I mean, everybody else didn't see my name on the list. I, I, I remember the feeling of loneliness. I was surrounded by other players. And I felt all alone. That, that, thing, that thing got to me. Some days when I think about it now, still gets to me. Y'all pray for me. I'm in therapy. It's all right. Pray for me. But, but my experience helps me read Acts chapter 1 in a different kind of way. See, when I read this passage in Acts chapter 1, there is a certain name that sticks out for me. And it's not the typical characters and the typical names you would hear. It's not James. It's not John. It's not even Peter. It's not even apostles. But there's a name you hear in this passage that you never, ever hear again in Scripture. Joseph. Of Barsabbas, also known as Justice. Friends, at the time of our text, Jesus has ascended back to the Father, having completed his mission here on earth. Judas, the betrayer, is dead. And the apostles believe that they now must replace Judas in order to restore the apostolic order back to 12 where Jesus had set it. Peter, uh, the, 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 the spokesperson, if you will, at this time sets the criteria for the one who is to replace Judas. He says it has to be one who was with them when they were with Jesus from his baptism all the way to his ascension back to the father. They uh, collect resumes and survey curriculum vitae, if you will, and they discover that two men rise to the top, Matthias and Justice. Bible says they cast lots. Casting lots in scripture is similar to drawing straws or rolling dice. You, 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 you know about rolling, rolling dice. In, in biblical times, they believe that this was how they could discern and decipher the will of God. That they, they believe that to whomever the lot fell was the one God had chosen. The lot falls to Matthias. So this event now has the authority of God stamped on it. Matthias becomes the 12th apostle. But for Matthias to get a yes, it means justice had to get a no. Y'all, this is one thing for man to tell you no. But it's a whole other conversation. For you to sense and believe that the no you received came from a divine address. It's one thing for man who's fickle and frail and faulty to, to tell you you don't qualify. You're not good enough. You don't belong. But what do you do when the no you receive feels like it came from God? The God who says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The God who says I have established you and set your time in order even before the foundation of the world. I know you got a theology that says God loves you. But the same God who loves you can also tell you no. What do you do? God disappoints you. See, we often, often focus on, 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 on the idea and the concept of, of, of God choosing us selecting us uh d d d divinely picking us but what do you do when you feel like god rejected you you feel like god said not not you you looked at you and said no not this time I'm talking to somebody today who's wrestled with this cold hard reality i, I know you can't say amen real loud uh, uh, because when you think about this, your soul, a scar and a scab gets pulled off of it. 
you feel some type of way. Matter of fact, you already been transported back to five years ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago where you didn't get the thing you thought you were supposed to have and it still messes with you. So if you can't say amen today, just blink amen, I'll see it. I understand, I understand trauma can be triggered at all kinds of times. Trauma can take us to places and get us stuck in spots and we begin to wrestle with, I never really asked God, how did you leave me there? Never really wrestled with it. I just sucked it up and moved on and stopped thinking about it and talking about it, thinking it'll go away. But the truth is you still feel it now. What do you do? Here's, here's the problem. If we're honest, God's no bothers us so much because of how it feels. It feels like rejection. It feels like a statement that somehow you're not good enough. It feels like this, this, this callous confirmation that we are deficient or defective in some way. It, 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 it feels like this affirmation of an insecurity. You know that small voice? that shows up at the most inopportune times and tells you you don't belong here anyway. Some people call it imposter syndrome. But, 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 but in these moments, I need to caution you to be very, very careful. Because when we are disappointed with God's answer, we have a tendency, a dangerous tendency, to separate God's no from God's nature. We separate what God says from who God is. We separate how God operates from whom God has told us God really is. And the danger in this is that we have the tendency to misinterpret what God is actually doing. See, God's no friends might hurt me. God's no might bruise my ego. God, God's no might damage and deflate my pride from time to time. But God's nature is to love me always. God's nature is to always set things in order so that my best interests are kept. God, God's nature is to make sure that I do what God has called, commissioned, commanded, and created me to do. But if I separate God's no from God's nature, then I'll get stuck in the disappointment of what I can't have and I will mislabel God as uncaring. I'll say God is detached. God is not invested or interested or concerned in my life. But if I can take God's no and view it through the lens of God's nature, then even if there's something that I can't have, I can be all right because I'll be assured that God will always have me. Y'all, if God is who we claim God to be, then God's no is still a moment that can bless our lives. Be 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 because that no is intimately tied to the plans God has for us. So then, when I hear no, uh, it might mess with me. I might have to have a, a moment. I, I might need to give myself some emotional space, some time to grieve the loss, some, some, some moments to process what I'm feeling. But eventually, after I get through the emotional and the human part of it, I ought to step into an understanding of divine providence and be all right. Because even if I get a no, God is in that too. What I came to tell somebody today is don't miss God because he told you something you didn't want to hear. Just because the words did not land the way they wanted you wanted them to land doesn't mean that those words didn't come from the same place that many of your yeses came from. Don't miss God simply because he shows up in a way you don't appreciate. Beloved, walk with me today if you dare, if you dare, as we get a witness from justice on how God can create a moment for us by saying no. Now I want to tell you and be upfront: justice never has any citations or quotations in scripture. There is no text, there is no transcript from any of the words justice speaks in this moment, but his life speaks volumes to us. He shows us how to respond when God gives us a no. Are y'all interested today? What, what, what do you do when you get a no? Well, first of all, justice will teach us when you get a no, you got to resist the urge to demonize your no. You got to resist the urge to demonize it because no can be so painful. We usually look for ways to cope when we hear it. 
And one of the ways we cope is to demonize it in order to lessen the rejection that we feel. Let me show you some ways we do it. Here's what we do. We get a no from God and then we blame the devil for it. Y'all know how this works. I was trying to do what the Lord told me to do. But the devil is so busy. When I would do good, evil is always present. We blame the devil for everything that shows up that we don't like. And the enemy is sitting in the corner like, I ain't have nothing to do with that. The problem is, is that we have conflated the control and the power of God with the control and the power of the enemy. Let me say this. God has, God has enemies, but God does not have equals. God is omnipresent. The enemy is not. God is omniscient. The enemy is not. God is omnipotent. The enemy is not. So when the enemy shows up in your life, he is at a disadvantage. He only has a certain amount of resources and opportunities. Matter of fact, he got to get permission from God to even come see you. So stop blaming the devil for everything that doesn't happen in your life. Sometimes it's God protecting you from yourself. If we don't blame the devil, we'll demonize where the no happened. Here, here's, here's, here's how it works. Here, here's how it works. Uh, you, you, you were all in. You were invested. You, you, you were committed and you were connected in a space. And you were serving. And you were working. You were doing all these great things. But then something didn't go your way. You do, didn't get the answer you were looking for. Now all of a sudden, I ain't going to be there no way. I was, I was just doing it. I was just doing it for, for some time. Uh, in church, it sounds like this. Pastor, my season has changed. Because things didn't go my way. Can I tell you, ain't nothing wrong with your season and ain't nothing wrong with the space you were in. You're just mad. You're upset with God. Your ego is bruised and your pride is damaged. And you, you got to take it out on somebody. So it's got to be the place's fault. Preach, Pastor Face. If, 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 if we don't blame the devil, if we don't demonize where it happened, here's what else we'll do. We, we, we will demonize the people who are a part of it. Again, you're all in. You're invested. You're rooted. You're ready to go. You're, you're hanging out with, with friends. You've made uh, uh, co-laborers and, collabor and collaborators. You've made co-workers and got connections and y'all friends. And then they get something that you wanted. And all of a sudden, they... They can't see my gifts. They, they just, they hating on me. Ain't nobody thinking about you. You just mad. You in your feelings right now. And so you need somebody to blame. Can I help you here? Justice, y'all, helps us here because, y'all, 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 he was the one rejected by the apostles and some would argue rejected by God. And yet we never hear him, not one time, disparaging the no, nor the place where it came from. See, justice has walked with God long enough to know something that you and I need to know. And that is God works through yes and through no. Ju ju justice, justice has been hanging out with God long enough to know that God is sovereign let the church say sovereign what does that mean it simply means that god is in unshakable and unequivocal and un unchallengeable control and, and that sovereignty beloved is not subject to my satisfaction with my situation god ain't in charge just because i'm happy god is in charge when i'm angry and beloved, how can I praise God for the yeses I receive and then want to blame the devil every time I hear no? The truth is yes and no are both in the scope of God's providence and God's power. And if God is behind the yeses we enjoy, then we must also conclude that God is behind the no's we have to endure. I came to tell somebody, stop giving the enemy credit for God's creativity. Stop.
stop giving the enemy applause and credit when it's actually God at work. I can't tell your story, but I can tell you mine. I, I, I walked with God long enough to learn how to say thank you for some of the times where God said no. Oh, I remember it very clearly. Five, ten years ago, when I got that no, oh God, I had an absolute fit through a temper tantrum, laying on the bathroom floor in a fetal position, upset, cussing at God, mad with God because God didn't give me what I wanted. But now, five years later, 10 years later, 20 years later, I look back at them nose and I say, thank you, Jesus. God, thank you that you gave me a no when I wanted a yes because I'd have been in a place that was never my assignment. Thank you for giving me a no when I wanted a yes because I'd have connected to a fool that would have changed the trajectory of my life. Thank you for giving me a no when I wanted a yes. You'd have put me in a place that was beneath my purpose and my potential. Is there anybody here that can say, God, I'll just bless you for yeses, but I'll shout every once in a while because I got a no, you saved me. You gotta resist the herb to demonize the no. Wait a minute, justice, justice is teaching us. He says, he says, don't demonize the no. But here's the second one: uh, you gotta refuse to let no frustrate your faith. Uh, uh, you, you you can't let no get you in your feelings so deeply that you abandon your faith. Watch this. Hearing no can frustrate the faith of even the strongest believer. I don't care how long you've been walking with God. I don't care if you got a cell phone number. It don't matter. You get no to the thing you wanted a yes to and you wanted that thing bad, it'll mess with your soul. And when your faith, when our faith struggles, it usually shows up in a strange way. When our faith struggles, it usually results in the breaking of fellowship. In other words, when we get frustrated with God, our arms are too short to box God. So we take it out on the closest thing we can get to God. When we hear God say no, we separate from fellowship with God's church and from God's people. Oh, I know I'm preaching real good this morning. Because the moment, the moment something doesn't go our way, we take up missing. The moment things don't work out and God was supposed to answer the way God was supposed to answer and God does not, oh boy. We take it out on God's church and God's people. Watch this. Justice is helping us. Because Acts chapter 1, y'all, justice is denied the chance to become an apostle. You mean tell me after all that time he didn't put in? I mean, he was there. He fit the qualifications from baptism to ascension. He was there after being qualified. And then after getting that close, he still hears no. I can't testify for you, but, but here's, here's a conversation I've had with God recently. Uh, uh, if you're going to tell me no, God, tell me no early. If, I, if I'm going to get rejected, don't let me get to the Super Bowl and lose. Let me lose in the wild card. Let, let me lose in the first round. Because by the time I done got that far and I'm that close now, I done picked out furniture for my office. Now I done decided what the promotion money going to be spent on. Now I got, I got a whole shopping cart on Wayfair.com about what my walls going to look like. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. You've done this too. You mean tell me you let justice get this close and then he gets a no? Oh, that, 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 that messes with you. That messes with you. Uh, uh, but the Bible says he stays connected to the early church. Wait a minute. These are the same folk who saw him get rejected. The rejection was not a backroom deal. It was a front room event. Everybody saw him get rejected. But in, chapter, in the next chapter, chapter 2, his decision to stay with God and the Lord's church gets rewarded. He does not let embarrassment run him from his assignment. And in chapter 2, he gets rewarded. Y'all know, we, we, we read the end of Acts chapter 1, but you know what happens in chapter 2. The Bible says they're all on one accord, seated there in the upper room, and like a mighty rushing wind, the Holy Spirit comes rushing in and sits on each and every one of them with cloven tongues of fire, and they begin to speak as the Spirit gave them uh, utterance. Guess who was present and accounted for on the day of Pentecost because he didn't let his frustration run him from his faith. Guess who got filled with the spirit because he didn't let spite get in his feelings. Guess who 
was present to be blessed and empowered for his next season of ministry simply because he didn't let having a title mess up his day. Beloved, I want to help you today. If you don't let hearing frustrate, hearing no frustrate your faith, you will get rewarded. God will show you this wasn't it, but I'm taking you somewhere else. Matter of fact, you'll mess around and learn that you don't need a position for God to give you power. You don't need a title for God to have his hands resting upon you. If you'll stick with God and stay where God sent you, God will prepare you for your next season and you'll have everything you need when you arrive. I'm almost done. Just came to tell you, don't miss God. Don't, 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 don't miss God operating in your life. Don't, don't, don't let no frustrate your faith. Wait, wait, Justice got one more thing to teach us. He, 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 Justice will tell us uh, uh, today that, 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 that when it comes to getting a no from God, you got to remember that your no is leading to God's yes. I said it too fast. I'll say it again. Uh, J J Justice is trying to teach you and I that when we get a no in life, our no is always leading to God's yes. Beloved, trust in the providence of God is always built upon the acceptance that God is up to purpose. Can I tell you that there are no spaces, no seasons, no time, no corners in your life that God is not intimately involved. God knows what God is doing and everything that is happening in your life has been divinely and, and providentially arranged so that you can be where you're supposed to be at the time you're supposed to make the impact that you're supposed to make. So beloved, if you are getting a no right here, then God must have a yes somewhere else. But often, we are so in love with right here. And God knows this ain't it. But we are entranced. We are enthralled. We are in love and in affection with this place. So what does God have to do? God has to break our hearts right here. So we can detach from what was not for us and then God can get our attention to the place God wants us to be. What are you saying? Here's what I'm telling you. Often, difficult rejection is actually divine redirection. That when I am rejected in one space, it ain't the devil, it's God saying, not yet, keep searching, keep searching, keep searching. I'm taking you somewhere somewhere else I, i'll show it to you acts acts chapter one is the first and the last time you hear justice in scripture but friends the good news is that the scripture doesn't tell it all and 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 where scripture stops christian history picks up the rest of the story what do you mean what do you mean here's what i mean uh christian history beloved tells us that there is life for justice after his rejection Church history tells us, beloved, that Justice ends up becoming a bishop in the Lord's church. And he becomes a bishop of a city called El Eutheropolis. It, 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 it's, a, it's a Roman term that means city of the free. El Eutheropolis, beloved, is a prominent Roman colony, an administrative center there in Asia Minor. It, it, it has seven major trade routes that run in and through El Eutheropolis. And as bishop of this city, Justice now has massive influence, massive reach, and incredible impact. Not only could he lead the, the church in the city, but now everybody that enters the city can experience his impact and his leadership. What if God says no to him becoming an apostle in the church so that God could say yes to him becoming an agent of change in the city? What if? God says no over 120 leading them so that God could say yes over thousands that he would have authority and supervision for. What if God said no in one place because God's plans for him were bigger than the spot he was already in? I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I came to tell you every no is not rejection. Some of them are redirection. And sometimes the no that will disappoint you is going to lead you to the yes that will promote you. I just came to tell you, don't miss God. Don't get attitude with God. Have your moment. 
but trust God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Because whenever God says no, he's taking you to your to your yes. Beloved, I got to go. God bless y'all this morning. I got to let you go. But, 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 but there's somebody here who I left in the introduction. You still here and you stuck because you're stuck back in the place where you got rejected. You didn't miss the whole sermon because emotionally you have transported back to the same spot and your soul is still smarting from the damage that you refuse to give to God. Friends, 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 justice got rejected in scripture. John, that's me, got rejected too. But beloved, for somebody, that ain't enough evidence. Can I point you to another J in scripture that knows something about being rejected? Can, can I point to somebody else who knows something about getting to know? If you don't mind, I want to take you on a quick field trip. Grab, 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 grab your Lunchables and, and, and your backpack and, and, and jump on the school bus. We're going to a field trip down to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, now, when you get down there, make sure you take your ear pods out. Make sure you got your headphones off because it's not a watching trip. It's a listening trip. When you get down there, you're going to hear a voice. The voice of my Savior, your Lord, Jesus the Christ, talking to his Father. If you listen clearly, you'll hear him say, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. The transcript breaks up. We don't get the full conversation of what happens next, but we do get the end. Because at the end, the same Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. Be 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 beloved, what happens between request and response? I want to submit to you that when Jesus is praying to the Father, the Father says in between, no. Can we do this another way? Can we find another opportunity? Is there another shot, another chance? And God, the Father, says to God, the Son, no. It's messed up. It's the first time in Scripture the Father and the Son ain't on the same page. It's a theological conundrum. How do you wrestle with God the Father saying no to God the Son? They're supposed to be on the same page. Jesus testified, I and the Father are one. How, how does it work? That the father tells the son, no. I don't have the answer as to why God did it. But what I want to lean on today is the trust that the son has in the father. <laughs> what I appreciate about Jesus is that after God says no to him, the Bible says that the soldiers showed up that Thursday night and they grabbed my Jesus. And they whipped him all, all night long. The Bible says that uh, that one Friday night, uh, that same Jesus uh, dies on a Roman cross uh, for my sins and for yours. Uh, they put nails uh, in his hands. Uh, they put nails in his feet. Uh, and a crown of thorns uh, resting on his head. Uh, and the Bible says uh, he died. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, until the earth began to rock and reel. He died till the moon began to drip like blood. He died and blood began to run with the water from his side. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. But simply because the son trusted the father, he knew God was up to something. I did not get what I wanted, but I'm going to get what I needed. And Jesus gets a no in the garden so he could get a yes in the grave because early I said early Sunday morning Jesus got up with all power in his hands and because he lives all of my fears are gone because he lives all of my fears and heartaches they are gone because I know who holds the future life is a work the living just because he lives is there anybody in the building this morning that 
can testify I thank God for my yeses but I've grown and matured to say thank you Jesus for my nose this ain't for everybody this is a grown folks praise is there anybody that's grown in God that'll say I thank you for my rejection thank you sir for my nose you lay anybody in the building this morning that doesn't mind giving God a real praise lift your grown hands open up your grown mouth and say yes say yes say yes say yes Thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Rejection in the garden, but resurrection from the grave. Thank God. No in the garden, but I see a yes in the grave. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to hold on. Sunday morning is coming. Yes is around the corner. Hold on. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy, joy, joy. God didn't bring you this far to leave you now. Oh, what a word, what a word, what a word. What happens when things don't work out the way you wanted and thought they should. The invitation is extended. Maybe your name is not a J, but you have felt the disappointments of life. You felt the hurts. You felt the rejections. You've tried to piece it all together. And we need you to know something today. God's nature is he love you. He know the thoughts that he have for you. The plans that have already been written. Because of God's nature. He yet says come come and so if you're here today if you're here today if you are lost today is a good day to come if you need a church home today is a good day to come if you need to make some changes in life today is a good day to come if you're online you can come down the virtual aisle thank you 901-616-1258 Why don't you text to that number? All, all the time Thank you, thank you, thank you Here's another one, here's another one When it seems like Come on, come on, yeah, yeah Your problems Oh yeah Seem more Than you can bear He's there All the time Is there another one? Call him the same Why don't you take he, that? He's there He's right there All the time Oh my man He's there Can we say nothing? Oh the Let you know when you see like your problems, your problems, you can't handle it in no way. See more than you can bear. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. He said, He's there. Oh, 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 the time. The time. I know he 
I'll come when you want it, but listen. When it seems like, seem like your problems, your problems seem more than you can bear. Oh, yeah. Somebody ought to just wave your hand this morning. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> He's in the jailhouse. He'll meet you at the point of your knee. Yes, sir. But he's right on time. How many know when you have to shed tears? He, he didn't leave you. Let me ask you a question. Won't he wrap his arms around you? I, I, I just need somebody that really been there. Won't Thank he wrap you. his arms around you? Let me ask you this. In the midnight hour, the midnight won't he hour. rock you? Won't he rock, rock you? you? Yes, he will. Come on, come on, come on. I said, he right you. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! Thank you, G. God won't leave you. He won't leave you. When you're hurting, he's there. He's right there. Bro. When you're sick, he's, he's there. there. Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. Wait on it. This is what we got. Jesus is there. Father God, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for all these who have come. Oh, touch their hearts, knit their hearts with our hearts. For those that are online, God, thank you for being there in the midst of everything that we have had to go through, for never giving up on us, for always taking us to higher heights, God. Even when you have said no to us, we just say thank you. Thank you right now. Now, Lord, we, may you seal this message to all of our hearts and may all of us grow thereby in Jesus' name. Bless this preacher. Continue to pour into him. Pour it out so much to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Robinson Award and Deacon Neal, come on, amen. We pause right now to, to do one of the things that's one of the most favorite things of mine on Men's Day as we pause to honor one of the giants of this ministry, my, in the name of Deacon Arthur Robinson, a great friend and mentor to me and to all of the deacons and all of the men around Brown. And we pause every Men's Day to just honor a man who actually just 
follows in those footsteps in being dedicated to this ministry, someone who actually just shows himself worthy. And this means that we chose to recognize a young man who's done those things. And today we recognize Deacon Marcus Robinson. And Marcus could not be with us today as he's with his son in college. And I'm gonna ask his wife, Lawanda, come on, come to come up and set this for him. So thank you so very much, Luanda, for receiving that for him. Look, if you need us here at the church, we are here to uh, serve and to meet you. You can always reach out to the church, 662-6407. If this is your first time in person worshiping with us, amen. Uh, thank you for showing up on a men's day, amen. 2022, we got a special gift of appreciation uh, at the front for you for just coming and being a part of our service continue to uh, be in prayer for all of those funerals that we mentioned uh, that are upcoming. Uh, someone even had sent in a request um, asking us to pray for the family of Reverend Oscar J. Cobb of Gary, Indiana in his passing on this past Thursday. So we want to definitely be praying for that family uh, as well. And uh, so we want to keep those lifted up and appreciate all of those Brown um, week after week we're conducting multiple funerals just of our members and so I appreciate those members that show up to serve and to um, go beyond and to minister to these families. Early voting is taking place. Uh, please exercise your uh, right as a citizen and go out and vote there in Shelby County. And uh, one of our own members, amen, uh, Latrina is actually running for one of the judgeships there uh, in Shelby County. I know she would appreciate your prayers and support Latrina Davis uh, Ingram. Latrina, are you here? Did I, did I see Latrina here? This one? Okay. Okay. But appreciate um, your prayers for that as well. And then in Mississippi, we're going to have a meet the candidates on next Sunday after the 11 a.m. So those Mississippi candidates running for office um, from all sides you'll be able to meet with them and, and talk with them uh, so that you can know them um, up close and then November the 5th go ahead and put this out there we need more boots on the ground and uh, one of the things that we're doing is just having an old-fashioned boot camp uh, how do we share our faith how do we learn to become even stronger in our walk with the Lord it's happening November the 5th down at the South Campus and uh, bring your boots amen because we're going to be hitting the streets uh, as well. Excited about that. And then also from tutoring, if there's, uh, if you need it, parents, uh, we it's available. Uh, you can contact the church and get more information. Uh, you can sign up for cheer and dance as well. Uh, contact the church. This evening, we're celebrating with our Brazilian church plant as they celebrate their one-year anniversary, and that's happening on third on this evening at 5 p.m. And so you can join us for that as well. And uh, next Saturday, blessing in. In disguise um, our drive-through blessings in disguise event for children uh, featuring kids craft candy balloon art uh, characters so much more 10 to 12 here at uh, the main campus um, thank you again Brown uh, for your faithfulness and for all of your support I, I've been getting some text messages even those that have been coming through um, Sheree, amen uh, those that have even been visiting uh, watching and saying you know what Pastor we're standing with you uh, in this building purchase and so we are so thankful thank you so very much Carol and all the way from um, Laurel, Maryland thank you so very much great supporter of this ministry and uh, has said uh, that 
she's doing that as well. So I appreciate all of those. Remember, uh, look, you can join us. And as if 140 uh, is too little, add some zeros. Amen. Uh, add some zeros. And uh, we like zeros added. Uh, but we appreciate you for stepping up and doing that for us. Invite your others uh, to friends and others to be a part of that as well. You can give on your way out uh, as well as don't forget uh, the cash app dollar sign Brown Baptist as well. Uh, there's a pivot interest meeting amen uh, come and learn more about uh, this young adult uh, ministry with pastor floyd uh, trey and and so that's happening uh, as well tuesday october 25th 7 o'clock p.m at the south campus if you're part of the 3522 um, young adults that fall in that age category, um, please step out, uh, come and be a part of that this Tuesday. Brother Paul Porter got some products out front there. Appreciate y'all supporting him as well. Come on, y'all stand. Pastor Man, you preach uh, again today. And look, um, last night, last night um, as well, just blessed our soul so if you have not watched last night uh, service you ought to watch last night service we need what we don't want um, how do you handle opposition amen rejection opposition I can't wait for 11 o'clock service to see um, but I appreciate uh, him encouraging us uh, on today uh, this is a year of power where we are able to do more because of his great power Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 come on let's read that together now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think and um, my new members amen we'll see y'all at one o'clock online amen for discover brown but father god may you bless and keep us make your face to smile upon us and be gracious unto us may you lift up your countenance grant us your peace i pray in the name of jesus that we would know that even when you say no you have a yes around the corner and you have greater opportunities for us Help us not to grow weary in well-doing, nor to be frustrated in our faith, but to continue to trust you no matter what. Lord, we commit this purchase project to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you will continue to enlarge the territories of this ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Y'all come back and fellowship with us. Amen.